Programming jobs are growing 12% faster than the market average. Now, this is no surprise as the world is in an information technology race. But Africa severely lags behind in terms of the distribution of computer science talent. A failure to rectify this problem will leave the inhabitants of the region in a state of perpetual dependence. The roots of this problem are best illustrated with the story of Victor, a recent Nigerian secondary school graduate who aspired to study computer science. In school, Victor was only taught QBasic, a now obsolete programming language, as this is what the West African curriculum requires. He lacked the incentive to self-learn more relevant programming languages because of the school's already intense workload and homing, learning at home was also no ideal. On admission to an international university, Victor realized he couldn't compete with his peers, and so he gave up on his dream. So we spoke to Victor's principal, Mr. Okunabi, and he told us that although the school intended for all its graduates to be global competitors, it could do nothing to change the national curriculum requirements. And furthermore, it was too expensive to hire skilled staff to teach. This was a trend that we discovered and we encountered time after time in our research. So what is the solution? Chameleon, a gamified digital learning environment introduced directly into schools as a club. Once a school partners with us, our learning environment is introduced to it on a local server from which the school's computers can connect and receive content. It features a video tutorial for each chapter, a lesson summary, a direct working space to try out the code being taught, and a playlist of related videos, practice questions, and a frequently asked questions chatbot. Students will also improve on their skills by participating in games and challenges. This is an example of one of our games called Exterminator, where the students have to debug the code given to them in as short a time as possible. And this is a recorded session of three students competing and testing our platform right now. Based on these games and challenges, students will be ranked within the school, but also across all quarters on our platform. Students and schools at the top of our leaderboards will be rewarded and recognized annually for their commitment to IT education. Without a change to the national curriculum, our platform provides students like Victor with high quality IT education. Through our gamification features, they're incentivized to continue using our platform, especially when the lessons get harder. And for all this value created, school administrators like Mr. Okunabi don't have to spend the time or the money looking for skilled staff to teach their children. The total market available in Sub-Saharan Africa is valued at $2.4 billion across approximately 1,800 schools. Starting in West Africa, the market value is $290 million. In the first in the first two years of active operation, we hope to capture 150 private schools in Lagos and Abuja, valued at $630,000. We will achieve this market potential by applying an annual subscription fee model. Further, this will be augmented by school registration fees and corporate sponsorships for our in-person, inter-school competitions. Chameleon is largely manpower independent, unlike having to hire new teachers to teach or organizing a coding camp. Also, Chameleon is school optimized in that we are directly introduced and become part and parcel of the school's ecosystem, unlike a solution like Codecademy, which is designed for individual use and not collective and collaborative learning. To acquire our customers, we plan to engage with three distinct channels. Firstly, school administrator outreach directly and through the national associations. Secondly, speaking at parent-teacher meetings, and thirdly, exhibiting our product at educator conventions and award ceremonies. And we have the best team to implement this solution. Tofumi has over six years in software development experience. Shamsa is an accomplished financial and data analyst, and I have experience in the management of three previous startups. In our advisory team, we have lifelong experts in the fields of education, business development, and marketing. If there's anyone to be taking on this problem, it's definitely us. In order to enhance the learning experience of our students and diversify our offering to school administrators, our ask for today is for partners in curriculum development and content creation on our platform. We are democratizing the access to high quality information technology education, not because it's our mere desire, but because it's our need and responsibility. Join us today.
uh, the competition, competition slide was for the world or it was just for Africa? This is considering the world. So you're saying like there's, uh, there's no other startup doing this for schools till now? No, there are, there are current solutions which do after school coding programs, but their business models are uh, manpower intensive. So the example would be code.org or code club, which involves them sending out their instructors to the school. Uh, so that kind of framework, which but what we're trying to focus on is a solution that is manpower independent. So all the school needs from us is our local server and all our content will be available to them just from that. And what is the content? So who, who produces the content? I mean, you, they use your platform, but who's, who's creating the content? So that's, that was part of our ask, actually. So we partner with um, freelancers that create the content for us. They're not part of our organization, but they're one-off um, um, inputs, yeah. essentially. You, you mentioned Principal whatever, whatever his name is. What, it's going to be. Yeah. Yes. So you said his problem is that he has a hard time going outside of the nationally mandated curriculum. Mm -hmm. So are you suggesting that, you, that you're going to get this uh, included in the national curriculum? No. no. It's too much of a timely and costly process to lobby the government. And it's a whole West Africa. It's not only the Nigerian. It's the West African region which uses this curriculum. So that process is not something that we can engage in. But what we can do is provide this solution so students have access to high quality IT education directly after schools. Who, who's paying for the subscription fee? It's, it's more of, because um, as when we spoke to a lot of principals, they indicated they wanted their students to be competitive, especially on the global stage. Yeah. And as the world is moving towards IT, this is the value add for their schools. So, yeah. they, so that's why we provide it to them as an after school club. So the schools, they uh, subscribe based on the number of the students, right? Um, no, the schools, our subscription fee for all schools is a fixed fee. This is based on our preliminary market research, this is uh, proving to be the most ideal um, business model that we should use. And we're, um, on average, we're kind of standing at $14 per student for an average of a school, for average, school size, yeah, school size of 300 students. And that, that's 4,300. Yeah, funds are at $4,300 annually. So $14 per student annually. This is your, what is the student criteria in this case? At what level you want to introduce, like is it at what stage, like uh, is it at an undergrad level, graduate level, and secondly, what's the motivation for if, if there are students of 300 students there, mm -hmm. maybe two, three, five people might be interested, what is the motivation for somebody to come and do this? What is it that a school want to do? Because your ideally the scenario is like, everybody wants to get access to this and they should be working towards, uh, or, or they should at least access this mm -hmm. thing so that they can announce their skill set. So what's the motivation for somebody and at what level you want to introduce this? So it's at the secondary school level that we, we plan to introduce this. And we be introducing it at the secondary school level because it's we're essentially targeting two sets. People that are interested, they're not sure they want to major in computer science. They're thinking, okay, maybe, maybe not. And also people that have already made up their mind that they want to go into computer science. And when we did our market research, we realized there's actually a significant number in, in, um, in, in West Africa. But because of the curriculum, as we discussed, mm -hmm. they're not really able to explore this. So um, market research indicated interest. Um, but then you don't have the means to explore the interest. Even if, even if you're not 100% committed to this field um, for a career, at least having the means to explore it in the first instance. And just last one question, why are you restricting yourself to Africa? Because there are so many other Asian countries as well where they have the same problem. So yeah. is there a specific task that you looked at Africa? So we've already begun um, market research for what value adds to introduce to countries like in Southeast Asia and um, North African region as well as um, the Middle East, and one thing we're exploring right now is language as a barrier to entry. So curriculums being introduced to students in English, whereas they prefer instruction in Arabic, a potential problem. So we're also looking at this as well, but the place with the major pains right now, Sub-Saharan Africa. Thank you, guys. Yeah.